with Nick Khanna, Managing Director, BAE Systems India. Let me start by asking uh, Nick, can you give us an overview of BAE Systems in India? We're now coming on to over 75 years in India, in one form or the other, with our predecessor companies. Long, proud uh, pedigree in history here. Uh, we've long been involved with uh, the first aircraft programs, uh, really uh, coming out of the Second World War. The first frontline fighter capabilities, training uh, capabilities uh, with, with the Air Force. Long relationship that dates back between the Royal Air Force and the Indian Air Force. The first two aircraft carriers, the Harriers, and then, of course, you know, proudly beginning our, our, our foundations of defense manufacturing in India, going back to the Jaguar, of course, and then, you know, looking at uh, flagship programs like the Hawk, uh, built in India here in partnership with HAL. So you fast forward, you know, to now uh, in terms of the last couple of years, and uh, we signed the M777 Ultralight Howitzer. Uh, in a government-to-government -government deal between the United States and India. We are now in program delivery and execution of that program. So the first five of those ultralight howitzers were, were just uh, delivered to the Indian Army. We went through an induction ceremony uh, with, the, with, the, with the Honorable uh, Raksha Mantri in November. And of course, we had the debut on uh, Republic Day of uh, the M777 ultralight howitzer. So that sort of, of course, involves uh, a critical role for India. First time ever that we will be doing the assembly, integration and test of the ultralight howitzer. That's in partnership with Mahindra Defense Systems. First time that that's happening outside the United States or, or Great Britain. Um, and it really sort of goes to the testament of our Make in India commitment. Uh, that involves about 40 or so very capable Indian partners and suppliers. Uh, who we will, of course, look to engage with, and we'll also look to find a few others at our next supplier summit, which we will hold in April again this year. We we, we had a we we had a, a real success with the first one last year. Uh, a lot of Indian companies, a lot of engagements. Uh, we've been engaging with Indian suppliers for well over a decade, and we continue to engage across the breadth and depth of India, uh, looking at capabilities across not just the PSUs and the DRDU, of course, who we've got a long history with but also private sector companies, small and medium, and MSMEs as well. We're very excited also about initiatives such as, such as Digital India and, and Startup India, in addition to Make in India. So even in the startup community, we're looking at some real niche capabilities that we could potentially nurture uh, you know, towards innovation, towards technology. As a defense and security technology leader, we're always looking for some exciting things that could be coming out. So moving to the air segment, uh, we continue to showcase capabilities that we could do in terms of enhance, sustain, and really improve the capability of the Hawks uh, through upgrade and, and through enhancement of some capabilities. But we continue to make sure that we are supporting those, uh, uh, that, that very capable platform. And talk about a broader range of training solutions, uh, help, help the Indian Air Force as they induct uh, new platforms and continue to operate a very diverse field of aircraft we continue to talk to them about really looking at their overall training doctrine and training solutions and that's where synthetic training and the synthetic training environment becomes uh, becomes a very cost effective uh, way to achieve that. Staying within the air domain, uh, we're also talking about the UK's launch of the Combat Air Strategy in July of 2018 at Farnborough and uh, that's really where the UK MOD outlined its vision uh, that looks beyond uh, uh, typhoon sort of the, over the next 30 to 35 years and so uh, you know sort of really looking uh, sort of beyond that spectrum and looking at a next generation capability and a future combat air system and, and, and what that might entail and, and and that again is an exciting area because that's where the UK government will be looking at international partners to 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 express some interest and to potentially demonstrate some interest and some capability in terms of having a role and lastly, then in the naval and the maritime uh, the, uh, domain, we are talking about um, our 127 millimeter Mark 45 gun, which is the premier combat proven uh, five inch gun, uh, which is in service with the United States Navy and five other, five other navies. We are progressing an acquisition case at the request of the government of India through a foreign military sales program along with the United States Navy. We're also talking about a few other uh, capabilities such as APKWS, which is our which is our, our precision fire laser guided rocket 
uh, which which we can really offer to India. Uh, sort of again, a very cost-effective precision fire capability for rotorcraft and for fixed-wing aircraft. So we've had a range of range of discussions today um, um, across the services. There's real interest for something like that. Uh, in addition to uh, things like um, Light Heart, which is our helmet, uh, uh, our head-up display, and our Striker 2 helmet-mounted display, which we've again shown shown to the services yet again. I think I think this is the, the, the third show now in a row where we where we've demonstrated uh, some of our latest capabilities uh, as a solution to India's uh, uh, fixed wing and its and its helicopter platforms in terms of the the very diverse range of. Uh, uh, sort of Western platforms that it is now in introducing, plus a lot of the indigenous helicopters that are being built by HAL. Nick, the the signature of Make in India is reflected in joint ventures and MOUs with various companies. How extensive is your engagement there? Very extensive. You know, so it really goes back to the tenets of our long history here. We've long realized uh, the benefit and the value of, of working with Indian partners. I think we've demonstrated that over the decades. Uh, we've worked with with, uh, with, with the DPSUs. Uh, we've now really uh, extended and deepened our relationship with the private sector. And like I said, with our supplier summit, we're continuing to find uh, you know key suppliers in sort of niche areas. And so that's going to continue. I mean, that, that, that is a journey that we're firmly on. We're looking to increase our industrial footprint. We're looking to grow our, 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 our sourcing and procurement out of India. In fact, we've done more in sourcing and procurement in the last two years than we did in the five years preceding that. And I think we'll have another banner year again in 2019, where the amount that we're sourcing from India, uh, and sourcing and procurement, uh, procuring materials and, and a range of engineering services, and also advanced materials, will 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 continue to continue to increase. So again, that involves you know a number of partnerships and a number of companies who we're now working with. And I think what you will see uh, in time to come is that we will be growing uh, the number of, of key private sector uh, companies that, that we're working with. And lastly, any announcements, any highlights from Aero India show? Nothing that, that, that is quite specific to, to any, to any uh, partnership, so to speak. A lot's going on behind the scenes, uh, as I said. There's a lot going on where we've been working hard and trying to develop certain areas, trying to enhance certain areas. We've got uh, you know, focus groups between ourselves and, and the partner companies that we're working. Suffice to say, there's a lot happening behind the scenes. And I think at, at the right time and at the appropriate time, we and our partners would be able to send more.